Hey there, it's Quirky Driven Life. In 1903, businessman Henry Overholster built a 20-room mansion on three lots in what is called Heritage Hills today. The Overholster Mansion was the first mansion built in Oklahoma City. Henry Overholster arrived in Oklahoma Territory for the April 22, 1889 land run. He had the foresight to have lumber shipped to the territory so he could immediately begin building businesses. In a few days, he had already had six businesses built. Within a month of arriving in the territory, Mr. Overholster was elected president of the Board of Trade, which is the precursor to the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. Six months later, Henry married Anna Ione Murphy. Overholster built the Overholster Opera House, Overholster Theater, and the Grand Avenue Hotel. Overholster is sometimes referred to as the father of Oklahoma City, as he is accredited for bringing the first streetcar line to Oklahoma City. In 1895, Overholster and C.G. Jones established the St. Louis and Oklahoma City Railroad, where the Frisco Line offered services from Oklahoma City to Tulsa, Kansas City, and St. Louis. Overholster ran unsuccessfully for mayor of Oklahoma City twice, but he was elected as county commissioner. Mr. Overholster is also regarded as the person who helped the Chamber of Commerce purchase the grounds for a permanent home for the Oklahoma State Fair Park. Overholster's business endeavors and entrepreneurial demeanor contributed to the economic success and population boom of Oklahoma City. Although all of his buildings have been torn down, the Victorian mansion still remains. It was top of the line splendor for its day with all the modern conveniences. Italian artists hand painted the walls and the home's craftsmanship is gorgeous. The home was used many times for entertaining, socializing, holding weddings and other special events. Henry and Anna had one child together in 1905. Her name was Henry Ione Overholster. Henry died in 1915. Anna lived in the home with her daughter and son-in-law until her death in 1940. Because the Perrys had no children of their own, upon Henry Ione's passing in 1959, her husband David J. Perry inherited the home which he kept for many years. Perry sold the home to the state of Oklahoma in 1972, including all the belongings inside. He said it was what Mrs. Overholster would have wanted. The mansion is owned by the Oklahoma Historical Society and managed by Preservation Oklahoma. Although the Overholsters have passed away, Mrs. Overholster is said to still be roaming the halls. To be honest, if I had such a beautiful mansion, I wouldn't leave either. The Overholster Mansion and Carriage House host community events. It's open for public tours and available for private rental. The mansion has hosted several ghost tours and investigations throughout the years. I highly recommend attending a December tour when the mansion is beautifully decorated for the holidays. The next location I want to tell you about is the iconic hotel in downtown Oklahoma City that is notorious for being haunted, the Skirvin Hotel. Similar to Overholster, W.B. Skirvin arrived in Oklahoma Territory for the 1889 land run. Skirvin was a real estate developer and oil tycoon. Skirvin and his associates started selling land in the newly formed territorial capital of Guthrie. Skirvin moved to Galveston, Texas for a couple years before returning back to Oklahoma. In 1908, W.B. became a widower when his wife Harriet died, leaving him to raise his three children alone. Construction on his hotel began in 1910, and the Skirvin Hotel opened its doors for the first time in 1911. Mr. Skirvin lived on the ninth floor with his children. Originally, there was 22 rooms in two 10-story towers. A third 13th floor tower was added in 1926, and by 1930, all three wings were expanded to the current 14 floors. One of the frightening stories that has emerged from the Skirvin Hotel is the tale of a woman named Effie. Mr. Skirvin allegedly had a love affair with this woman, and she became pregnant. The narrative has been told that Effie was locked up and kept inside the hotel against her will. After having the baby, Effie became depressed and distraught for being imprisoned. Effie leapt off the balcony to her death below, taking the child with her. While there's no evidence to give this story any merit, guests have reported hearing a baby crying. When they inquired a hotel staff, they are informed there are no children staying on their floor. Other people have reported bangs in their rooms, voices talking when no one is there, being touched by unforeseen entities, TVs going on and off by themselves, and full-body ghostly apparitions appearing in their rooms out of nowhere. Several years ago, when opposing teams were in town to play the Oklahoma City Thunder, the visiting teams would stay at the Skirvin. Many professional basketball players described paranormal activity that occurred to them in their rooms while they stayed at the hotel. Some even blamed their losses on the ghosts due to poor quality of sleep the night before a big game. 
In its heyday, anybody who was anybody stayed at the Skirvin, from U.S. Presidents Truman, Nixon, and Eisenhower to performers such as Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, and the King himself, Elvis Presley. The hotel closed in 1988 and sat vacant for 19 years before being purchased and completely renovated. Once again, she was open to welcome travelers to stay for a memorable night. The Skirvin Hotel is part of the Hilton Hotel chain and is only a couple miles off of Route 66. The Overholsers and Skirvins are buried at Fairlawn Cemetery, Oklahoma City's oldest cemetery. Although David J. Perry went on to remarry after Henry Ione passed away, Perry is buried with the Overholsers. Nine times out of ten, nothing paranormal is going to happen to you when you visit either of these locations. But wouldn't it be cool if it did? <laughs>